Hey there, guys. What's going on? So last week was a little bit of a uh, little bit of a quiet and uh, dusty one here on this dog ate my vlogs. The uh, tumbleweed was kind of uh, rolling through since I really didn't uh, do very much following up my five final unboxing videos from the week before. Uh, but such is life, and you know I'm still, of course, always listening to new things and formulating new opinions and critiques and directions in which to go. And I like to feel inspired when I put together together my pieces here for everybody to uh, to hopefully, you know, to, to not only stumble across, but to also enjoy in their own way. And uh, hopefully, you know, everybody that stops by, they enjoy listening to me talk and ramble on in a good natured sense about all sorts of things. So, you know, I'm still working on that. And there are definitely a lot of things uh, before here and the end of the year. And then we're even starting to get into uh, January territory now of next year with a few things and that's partially why I'm here with this video today. Um, I was thinking of something that I could whip up really quick to start off the week here to hopefully uh, help alleviate your case of the Monday blues that you must have by now. And I thought to myself, well, why not talk about some of the interesting singles that are either on the cusp of coming out or we have a little bit of a wait to uh, to wait and hear the whole full encompassing album that they're going to be on. And I thought to myself about this for a bit and I realized that there are some really nice singles out there to talk about. So I chose three in particular that are my favorites right now that uh, I just wanted to sort of talk about in brief and uh, to hopefully get the word out there so you'll uh, get out there and enjoy and listen to them all. And the first one that I wanted to talk about today is the Gary Clark Jr. Uh, single from his forthcoming release that is actually formally due out tomorrow, but it can actually be found online for purchase today for whatever reason. His new uh, release, Black and Blue, which is his debut full-length album because he has only put out an EP to this point um, with just a couple of songs on it and a couple of uh, sort of live solo acoustic cuts and some other ones. And from what I've heard of this album so far, and I've listened to it a couple of times, it's um, it's definitely one that is very um, I'm very very excited about it. It's 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 definitely got a very unique edge to it, and I'm always a little bit on the wary side. It's not really a fair thing to do, but going into this, kind of learning a little bit about Gary Clark Jr. and some of uh, some of the details about him and some of his supporters like Alicia Keys and really big stuff like this. This guy seems like he's really going to hit it big. And, you know, I'm always a little, I'm always a little wary going into that. I, I don't know. I think, I think I'm always of that camp where I really like kind of just holding on to this good music that I hear. I don't want to, I mean, I want people to know, but in some way I don't want them to know because I want to hide this really amazing secret, this really cool thing that I found. And Gary Clark Jr. for sure is, is no exception to this rule. Um, he's really, in a sense, he's not like a lot of people that I've heard because he mixes together the Austin style blues of Stevie Ray Vaughan and like the, you know, the Akron based fuzzed out jams of the Black Keys with his own sort of John Legend-esque R&B kind of hip hop inspired uh, smooth edge to it as well. And it's, it's really an interesting contrast because it's not as though the record keeps you in one direction and, you know, you kind of stay in the same gear. One moment it's harder and thrashing out and the next minute it's smooth and really just catchy and has a great groove to it. Um, but before I go into just reviewing the whole album here, before I actually do my review proper on that uh, on that album, I just wanted to talk about the, uh, the single from that, Ain't Messing Around, which um, isn't like my favorite song on the album. I, I think... Um, when My Train Comes In would probably be a better uh, song, but it's really not the best single material because it's a long song with a lot of um, a lot of really fuzzed out hard guitar on there. Not really the most palatable single for most people, so I understand why they did it, but that's no offense to this particular song. It's, it's definitely got a, a big sort of a pop sound to it, a little bit of a, a pop, sort of pop sensibilities to it, 
um, but it still maintains that retro kind of Memphis blues kind of Stax records era sound to it. And, um, you know, there's some horn work in there. And it, uh, and his vocal, again, again, he, he just has a very John Legend-esque, um, just a delicate edge to it that just really offsets the roughness of his playing and just allows him to be really versatile as a musician. And it's really exciting to hear that stuff and his music, the way that it works, whether it's, whether it's got that edge to it or whether it's got the groove going on, it's very, um, it's very catchy. It gets into your head very easily. And I find that I'm really enjoying that as well as the fact that he is one hell of a guitar player. Probably the most immediately intriguing guitar player I've discovered since Dan Arbach of the Black Keys, which he had definitely has some similarities to. Um, but Ain't Messing Around is really, um, it's a, it's a good single. It's a good start to the record. I don't think, I think if you're looking for a certain thing, you got to wait until you hear the full record. Like I said, you can uh, download it today. Um, it formally comes out tomorrow, but you can hear it now. And it's just sort of a taste of what you'll be sort of experiencing with Gary Clark Jr. in Black and Blue. And um, I'm really, really excited about it. I think it is going to be a hot release to really kick off the end of October and as we get into the last couple of months of the year. But that is that particular one. And next, I wanted to talk about one that's it has been out there a little while and I've been sort of meaning to approach it a little bit, but I haven't um, gotten to talk about it really. And uh, that would be Andrew Bird with his uh, second album in 2012, which is a very uh, unusual thing to say, um, called Hands of Glory, and the single Three White Horses from that album. And basically what this is, and I think from what I know about Andrew Bird, he's kind of done little things like this before. Certain songs have appeared in different forms on little releases that he's done, like as something was an instrumental on an earlier release, and then it showed up as a, um, you know, a song with, it was all fleshed out, it had the lyrics and stuff, where it was maybe just the instrumental piece before, or there's parts and pieces changed in it, something like that. So this is kind of the, like, I don't know, like the, the next chapter, sort of like the epilogue or something like that, the continuation of Break It Yourself from earlier in the year, which if you watch my channel, of course, it was uh, definitely one of my uh, favorites of all the reviews I've done on my channel. It's one of my uh, highest scored albums to this point, and um, I, was, I was a big fan. Um, I, I, there wasn't really a bad song on it. It just immediately hit me with how gorgeous it was. And, you know, it's not like Hands of Glory really goes way outside of the box. I mean, I've only really heard Three White Horses so far, but it's that comfortable range that's so Andrew Bird. I mean, it's just so immediately ingratiating and the soft vocals and his, you know, violin and the, the style that he just puts together and then the wonderful three-part harmony and just how he um, orchestrates these tracks. And it's it's not like it's the most overwhelmingly knock you your socks off kind of thing. I mean, it's not like sort of like a Gary Clark thing with the bombast and the kind of just the immediate punch to it. But it's just, it's that familiar folk music territory. Just that familiar, you know, toss your coat over a chair and sit down by the fireside and just, you know, enjoy just these wonderfully welcoming harmonies and textures that he's just so well known for. And it's only eight songs, unfortunately, but it's it's a cool little um, addition to what he's done already this year, and I'll definitely be uh, doing a review of that. I'm, uh, I'm pretty excited about that, I gotta say. Uh, my overall opinion of Andrew Bird really shot up this year a lot after I got to see him a couple of months back which if you follow my channel here, you'll see some of the videos that I posted. And he's, uh, he's definitely grown on me a hell of a lot. But I think if you really like folk music and you just enjoy someone who's a talented performer, I mean, in the sense of being able to play multiple instruments, loop over yourself, and just really have multiple ranges of talent, uh, Andrew Bird is definitely your guy. So I would definitely suggest Three White Horses, just a very comforting, familiar thing all around. And for the last one, the three of the third of the three that I wanted to talk about here today, 
is actually one for January of 2013, the end of January, so to speak, in the form of Local Natives with their next, their song from their next album, which is, I don't know the name of the album actually, but the name of the song is called Breakers, and I've heard it a couple times so far. Um, I believe the record is due out January the 29th of 2013. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I believe that it is somewhere in that range. And um, it's... It's pretty much what you would expect from them uh, if you really got into Gorilla Manor and got to hear that, which it was that was their debut album uh, from a couple of years back now. And you know, I I really enjoyed Gorilla Manor. I know people felt that it it kind of lagged on the second half, and it really wasn't as strong as some of the the really the harmony laden bands that are out there like. Of like the Fleet Foxes or Grizzly Bear, but those are different styles. I'm just comparing mostly on the uh, the harmony aspect. But I think if you really enjoyed them, and I know I really did, I thought there was a lot of really uh, catchy material that just was very ear catching. You, you'll definitely like where they're going with this one. It definitely incorporates the same elements of um, you know, there's a lot of percussion going on. There's there's percussive elements in there a lot. Um, which was definitely a dominating factor on Gorilla Manor. And um, the same sort of harmonies are there. Um, the production is a little more on the, the lush side this time, I think. It's a little more... Um, it's a little heavier than it was. Not that, not that they were always really bare bones on Gorilla Manor. There were some parts that were pretty... Um, pretty decently orchestrated, but it, it feels a little more dense somehow this time around. And... That part, I'm not sure what to think about it. Almost, eh, I'm not sure what to think about that. It sort of pushes them in like a, a sort of a direction like the Shins with uh, their last album, or kind of what the Shins do in general, which is that kind of glossy, uh, colorful pop that they're really known for. Um, but I think it's going to be an interesting direction, and that, along with one other record that I'm keeping an eye on for next year, will definitely be a nice way to uh, kick off 2013 when we hit January and all of that. Um, but that is then, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, some of the singles and things that are definitely catching my ear right now. Uh, you can hear Breakers over on the music blog 24-bit. If uh, you don't know how to find that, just Google that uh, away and that'll come right up. Uh, that's right on their front page right now. And, um, you know, as with everything else, like I said, you can download the new Gary Clark Jr. album today. Um, there might still be a pre-order available for the Andrew Bird album because it is not due out until October the 30th, um, but I believe you can still pre-order um, on standard, I think it's either on standard vinyl or just CD, I'm not sure if the vinyl, because they were doing uh, a deal where you could get the vinyl um, in sort of a splotch, like a speckled orange color. And I don't know if they did away with that when their original package went away, which is what I obtained. Um, or th I would think they're going to do a standard black vinyl, though, for it. Um, so that should that would be available um, on CD, of course, and um, a standard, um, I believe they're doing a lithograph, a uh, really, really nice lithograph with that as well. Um, but definitely go check that out. These are some, uh, some really nice releases and uh, a nice way to kick off the week with some of the stuff that's definitely been, uh, been on my mind lately and some things that I've really been enjoying. And, of course, as usual, keep your music flowing and your vinyl spinning. I will see you all very, very soon. <laughs>